Hey, my name's Ayoka, and welcome to this episode of Mind Elixir. Don't mind your business, mind my podcast, Mind Elixir. In this episode, I'll be talking about fast fashion, sustainability, and ethical fashion, all of that. I'll just go over what I know about it so far. What is fast fashion, first of all? Fast fashion is basically when stores, they'll just mass produce a bunch of cheap items, and it'll be like trendy items. You know, one of the main places I I would think of whenever I think of fast fashion is Forever 21. And like, these items, they're not exactly ethically made, and they just, they'll usually go out of um, trend, go out of style really quickly. So people just end up throwing it away, and that hence the word fast, fast fashion. It goes in style fast and goes out of style fast. One of the main fast fashion brands that I think of is um, Forever 21. And a lot of these fast fashion brands are, like, so problematic. But I know fast Forever 21, they're actually going bankrupt right now. And, like, usually fast fashion brands, so they'll be cheap. But something I don't understand is, like, some of them will be, like, expensive, but then they literally have people working in sweatshops for $3, way but be- like, working in sweatshop- sweatshops way below minimum wage. And it's just not fair. And a lot of these brands, they're also problematic. Problematic. Like, Dolls Kill. So, Dolls Kill, if you don't know, they're this brand that sells, like, cool alternative clothing, and it's kind of, like, catered towards subcultures and stuff. But their clothing is, like, so overpriced. And I don't understand that. Like, it's cheaply made. I know that. $23 for some mesh t-shirt. No thank you. No thank you. But, um, I have to admit, like, their clothing was kind of cool. And honestly, I wanted to, um, get some of it. Because, like, it just seems so interesting and, like, alternative and all that. And I remember whenever I wanted to be, like, pastel goth. I would always watch um, Julia Zelg's videos, and she was a big buyer of Dolls Kill, but she actually denounced them, because they have been doing some kind of problematic things. So they are known for stealing other people's art and using it on their on their um, designs for their clothing. And people work hard creating the art, for it. so for a big, big brand to just steal it without credit, is that, that's not cute. And also, they're known for scamming people, refusing refunds. They also sold this shirt. Oh my gosh. They sold this shirt, and it said, um, goth is white. And it was apparently supposed to mean that goth wasn't only just black colors, but you can see how that can be easily misinterpreted. They also sold this shirt that said, dead girls can't say no. That speaks for itself. You can probably already tell why that's problematic. And um, they sold a Native American headdress, which has cultural significance. And speaking of that, I also hope that... I'm glad that the Redskins are changing their name, because that was a long overdue. And, like, it's just, um, like, not good. And, like, they did apologize for, like, all doing all of this, and they said they would purchase $1 million from black-owned businesses or something like that. And the owner of the brand, Shoddy Lynn, she did a po- did an apology video on Instagram too. But I wasn't sure whether it was sincere or if it was just because they were losing customers. Like, that's what you never know. You never know if it's just something sincere, honestly. And, like, you could literally see her just looking at the cue cards in the in the back. Like, her eye, you could see her eyes moving toward it. And then, of course, Fashion Nova distorts the female body image, obviously. They're, like... The models on there, they just have, like, the tiniest waist, huge hips and boobs and everything. And also, Fashion Nova, they're known for not not paying black creators that represent their brand or that they've asked to spawn, that they've sponsored or something. Um, Victoria's Secret. The owner made some transphobic, fatphobic, and fatphobic remarks. And Victoria's Secret, it turns out that this place, it was actually created by a man who met a woman named Victoria and wondered what her secrets were. Yikes, yikes. And then Brandy Melville, so this one is like kind of like a hot topic, I guess. Um, people, they've always talked about their like experiences with racial profiling at this store and the fact that they only have skinny white girls as the mod- models on the website. And like literally every other YouTube video I see, there's this girl doing a Brandy Melville haul. It's like, huge Brandy Melville haul. 
checking my Brandy Melville collection. And it's, like, literally everywhere. I kid you not. And I, and I admit, it kind of makes me want to shop there. I was actually at PacSun the other day looking at their clothes. But then again, why is it so expensive? You know, these clothes were probably made in some sweatshop at people working minimum wage. So, I don't understand why it's so expensive for literally the most basic shirts. And, like... Also, another thing people have a problem with is the fact that they have this um, notorious one-size-fits-small type of thing going on. So it's like, I understand that sometimes it can be kind of hard to find um, clothes for skinny people. Like me, I have like a size 23 or 24 waist, and it's hard to get jeans that fit correctly, like they're the right length, fit the waist, everything, you know, all of that. But like, at the same time, if Brandy Melville was a petite or small girl's girl store, then they would have sizes in different sizes of small. You know what I mean? They'd have like extra, extra small, extra small, and small. But they're just like one size fits all. One size fits small. They don't say that, but it obviously is. And for those of you about to say, well, they have oversized, they have big clothes too. Well, that's because it's meant to fit oversized on skinny people. So, yeah. And, like, so, basically, the clothing at Brandy Melville, Melville, it's like, how do I explain this? So, there are stores for plus-size stores, right? But they have a variety of plus-size clothing. Brandy Melville, it just has one-size-fits-small and then the oversized clothing. That's what's kind of problematic. Then also, of course, there's Shane, 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 however you, however you pronounce it, that online store, that online clothing store with all the trendy clothing, um, they're just, like, so problematic, I don't, I don't even want to get into them, but, yeah, you know, and there's also this movement called the hashtag pay up movement, where I guess people are, um, Hold, starting to hold brands, especially fashion brands and clothing manufacturing brands, accountable and for how they treat their workers and the conditions and all of that and how their um, production and manufacturing affects the environment. And something else I know is like, so, thrift stores, they've started to be, t they used to be like kind of lame, I guess. Lame, I say that with quotation marks. But now you see like all these thrift flips and all of that and I was thinking about it and like at first I was kind of conflicted about buying re-thrifted stuff which is basically on on Depop a bunch of people they just buy stuff from thrift stores and then sell it on Depop and at first I was kind of conflicted about this because I was thinking hmm doesn't this lead to the gent gentrification of thrift stores but then I was like because most of the stuff at thrift stores it just it goes in the landfill anyway. Most of it doesn't even get sold. So when they're reselling it, they're actually picking out items. That's like, I guess that's kind of a good thing. As long as they don't overpick items. They don't just take away anything, everything. And also, of course, I know it's like, it's a privilege to choose to shop pet secondhand rather than to have to, um, to be required or have to not have a choice to shop secondhand, of course. And, um, I don't think sh people should be buying, like, kids stuff because, like, that's, like, essential if there's some, like, people shouldn't just be buying kids stuff from thrift stores because that's essential for some or oversized clothing because that's also essential for others because you can't exactly, because if someone is shopping at, needs to shop at a thrift store, then there aren't exactly any plus size thrift stores. You know what I mean? Okay. And then... No, uh, the other thing about trying to stop shop sustainably is that it may be hard to find, like, items catered toward your uh, style, so I understand that, but I think I kind of want to start, 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 what is wrong with my speech today? I think I kind of want to start shopping sustainably because, like, not necessarily sustainably, but just, like, wearing my clothes more often, and I'm not saying, like, I'm some eco-warrior or sustainability guru, or anything. I mean, I literally just went to get a bunch of clothes from Target last week for school. Even though we're probably not even going to be going to school. But, okay, besides the point. But I'll try to start wearing my clothes more. 
and um, shopping at thrift stores or secondhand or vintage. And maybe even some, some ethically made clothing and locally sourced stuff, too. And then Reformation, I've heard about this store being, like, sustainable or ethical or whatever. I don't know much about them, but they seem cool, too. And then, of course, there's Urban Outfitters. So let me talk about greenwashing, greenwashing. It's basically when brands, they'll try to make their products seem more eco-friendly, ethical, or sustainable without actually being that much more sustainable or ethical, eco-friendly, or any of that. Urban Outfitters, Zara, H&M, they are known for this. Honestly, I feel like Urban Outfitters, it's really only expensive for that aesthetic. It's not actually worth it. I don't know. But, so anyway, so greenwashing... They just try to make themselves seem more eco-friendly when, than they actually are, if that makes sense. Like, they'll be like, we have an initiative, but really they're, they're not being at so specific. They need to start being more specific about, they're just making vague statements. They'll be like, made out of 100% cotton, but really the only thing made out of cotton is the tag. They'll be like, recycled materials. But, like, they only recycled 1% of it or something. I don't know. But it's just really vague stuff. And it's just, like, kind of a marketing scam, I guess, to get people to buy from you. Because they think they're doing something good for the environment. When in reality, it's not really that big of a difference. Also, um, the thing about fast fashion is that it's trendy for a short time. But it's also, it's really cheap, so people will want to buy it. But then when it goes out of style, or it's since it's badly made, cheaply made, then people will just end up giving it away, and it'll end up in a landfill. Because most of the stuff at thrift stores just goes to a landfill, so yeah. And plus, if the store, they just keep, if they always keep making new trends, and more trendy clothing, that means they'll, that they'll keep getting more money because you keep buying and like you see all the all, there's so many hauls in youtube just promoting fast fashion constantly and i understand like so wait like these hauls from shane fashion nova those big online fashion fast fashion br brand retailers and it's like no like, you know these YouTubers, I guess they want to make some money, but at the same time, they can afford to shop sustainably, and they shouldn't always be promoting these brands that are so bad. They shouldn't be promoting them to such a large audience. I mean, I get it, like, these brands, they're probably paying you, but then again, is that really the message you want to send to all your viewers? You see what I mean? And something else, this fact I heard, I was watching this um, documentary, I think, about fast fashion. And the textile industry emits more greenhouse gases than aviation and international shipping combined. Like, dang, just the textile industry. That's a lot. Greenhouse gases. And I could just go get all into this stuff about climate change and all that, but I'm not that much educated on the that so far so that's for another episode and obviously I'm still young and I don't know much about this topic and there's still so much I can learn but you know just have to use what you know so far and I heard like honestly the way the garments are produced and processed those are also bad for the environment like um the dyes going into the river and all of that and especially all the pollution too and it's just like, yikes, what should I do? It's just like so, conf this makes me so conflicted, you know? And at the same time, I don't think like the women and children that are working in those um, factories for fast fashion brands, I don't think they should just stop working, stop working completely. But I think that they should get better working conditions, living conditions, and get paid better. Instead of the big brand just ripping them off the workers and making the clothing. Like, I just don't get it. Like, they should just pay them well, treat them well, and try to be better for the environment. Like, honestly, I just wish there was this, there was a store that had a variety of sizes from two times extra small to extra extra large with trendy clothes that I can actually wear to school that don't break the dumb dress code. 
that aren't overpriced, but they are sustainable and ethical. And they pay their workers well. But that's probably not even possible, is it? But actually, I've really wanted to start getting into making my own clothes. But I need to learn how to sew, first of all. And then, of course, I'm going to start... I want to start, like, um, buying from Depop and stuff. Because they have, like, more curated stuff toward a certain style. So that can kind of fix the problem if you think that thrift stores are lame or whatever. I'm just going to list a few things that you can do to help. Like, slow fashion, I guess. You can try not to buy clothes that you won't wear. If you look at something, if it doesn't look high quality, if it looks cheaply made, and you know you're probably not going to wear it a lot, then don't buy it. Probably the best, like, make the best choices for you. You can buy stuff from thrift shops, um, buy stuff off of um, some rese reselling websites and apps, like Mercury, Poshmark, ThreadUp, and of course, Depop. Give away your clothes to friends and siblings, or you can sell them, obviously, but don't get too greedy with ranking, with hiking that price up, because I know some people, they just overcharge on things. But g you can sell your clothes on apps, or give them away to friends and siblings, like I said before. You can do, like, a clothing swap with your friends where you just get together all of the clothes you don't want and swap them. And ob obviously, I'm not going to, like, completely stop buying from mainstream fashion stores, but I'll just try to be more aware of what I'm doing and how it impacts and who it impacts, I guess. That's what I'm saying. And also, I'm going to be making a post on my Instagram about this. It's at mine.elixir, and I'll be listing some stores you can buy from, some more tips for slow fashion, and all of that. So just make sure to follow me on Instagram, at mine.elixir, for more. Well, that's it. If you like this episode, make sure to recommend it to a friend or whoever. Bye.